So when an idea pops in my head, I, I like to try to get it down, you know, recorded or written down as soon as possible. So I'm actually at work. So if you hear some background noises, it's just because, you know, I'm at work and I'm actually, you know, doing my job as I'm, I'm recording this onto my phone. So I was listening to a podcast show the other day and one of the witnesses was describing having their house slapped by a uh, possible Bigfoot. And it kind of, when I was listening to the story, it kind of triggered me to a memory I had that happened to me, oh geez, somewhere around 2001. Uh, sometime after I first moved to Colville, Washington. I think I was about 24 when I moved over here. And um, I came over to give my folks a hand remodeling their house and doing some landscaping, stuff like that. Well, they let me uh, stay in their cottage, which was uh, up on the hillside behind the main house. And I was, it was one night, I can't remember the exact date, but it was sometime in 2000, 2001. And it was around, probably around midnight, almost 1 a.m. And I'm up there and I'm just kind of easing down from the day and kind of rocking out some uh, punk rock music. And all of a sudden something hit the side of the, uh, the cottage like on the back wall now this cottage sat up on the hillside not too far from the house but behind it just border lined with the forest i mean the forest came right up to the back of the house so whatever hit the, the back of the ca uh, cottage it just shook the entire thing and uh, kind of freaked me out at first and this was long before I was even into Bigfoot so I had no idea what I had just experienced so I immediately turned down the music and just stood there in the middle of the little living room that I had listening you know trying to comprehend what just happened and all of a sudden, another loud bang on the back wall. And that really freaked me out because it sounded like something was banging on the, on the outside of the house. And then I heard the loudest scream. And at first, you know, I thought it was like a coyote howling because I had no idea what a Bigfoot sounded like. But... Uh, after all these years, you know, that memory is now making me think twice that maybe this wasn't a coyote, you know, screwing around on the backside of the cottage. And that what I heard was a possible Sasquatch, but the scream was so loud. And immediately after the scream, the cottage got hit again on the backside of the wall. And I could hear something running around the cottage. I mean, I could hear heavy footfall, which again, I was beginning to think that it was just coyotes, you know, like right outside the door. Well, I got really freaked out because, I mean, this thing was like banging on, on the cottage and, you know, hearing something running around the house freaked me out so bad that at the age of 24, I actually sprinted out of the house, ran down to my parents' house, and I ended up sleeping on the couch that evening. Of course, they asked me the next day, he's like, so why'd you sleep on our couch? And I was like, oh, I was just watching TV and fell asleep down here. Uh, there was no way I was going to tell them that I got chased out of my house because some spooky noise was outside. But it made me wonder, could I, I have experienced uh, a Sasquatch slapping the side of the house like so many people report? It's interesting. So sometime after what I experienced that night, my brother and I, my older brother, and I hiked up the backside of the mountain, or the hillside, 
behind the cottage. And we hiked up quite a ways until the forest kind of opened up to this uh, large meadow. And we thought the hike was a little odd because we didn't hear any any animal sounds, not even birds chirping. It just seemed very, very, very quiet. And I do remember seeing a bunch of potential tree breaks. I mean, there was a lot of tree breaks going up that hillside. But at the time, you know, I, I had no idea what possible Bigfoot tree breaks and structures were. But I did notice that there was a lot of breaks going up the hill. But we, we really didn't see anything. We did get kind of this weird vibe once we hit the meadow. And it, it almost felt like you were being watched. So we eventually just turned around and headed back down to the house. But uh, what are the odds? What are the odds of that this could have happened? I mean, could, could it have been a Bigfoot? Could it have just been coyotes? Now that I'm thinking about it, I really don't think it was coyotes. Because I don't, I don't remember any ever hearing stories of, a, of coyotes like banging on houses and running around houses like that. And whatever was running, it was heavy. Very, very heavy. So, you know, it was just a, a memory that just got triggered after hearing this story on this podcast show. So, just wanted to share that. That uh, many years before, almost almost 10 years before I started Bigfooting, that uh, I might have had a Bigfoot encounter and had no idea that's what it was. just interesting just thought I wanted to share that with you guys and uh, and uh, see what you guys think you think I had a, a Bigfoot outside my my parents house slapping on it I don't know I wish I could go back and check that place out but parents sold that place years ago and it belongs to somebody else now and it's all private property so I guess it's just going to be one of those mysteries that I'll never get solved. You know, I never, never shared the story with anyone before. I always kept the story to myself, almost to a point where I forgot about it. I think I was more embarrassed that something scared me as an adult. And uh, I ran from it. And plus, I didn't think anyone would ever believe <laughs> believe me of what actually happened out there. And that makes me uh, think about how many people out there who have experienced something strange or unusual and have kept it to themselves and never reported it. So many people, probably have, there's probably so many more stories and so many more reports that are just tucked away in someone's memory. And either they're too scared or too embarrassed or have totally forgotten about certain things that have happened to them over the years and of their lives. And man, I could just imagine how many stories are out there. But like I said, you know, I was, I was embarrassed because I ran from whatever because it scared me and uh, I didn't think anyone would ever believe me so I never shared the story and eventually uh, I just kind of forgot about it until someone else's story triggered a memory and it just brought it all back to me well guys I better focus back on work so I'll catch you guys later have a good one.